What's going on, everybody? We are back for another dope episode of Finding Your Niche with Niche. This one has been like long awaited. This woman that is sitting next to me is somebody that I admire, that I love, um, and really that I just reverence for all that she has done in the community and all that she has done for women in the entrepreneurial space. I want to welcome Dr. Velma Traham, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here today with you, Nisha. Thank you. Um, so if anybody doesn't know you, uh, let's let's start it off with a little bit of fun. In one word, how would you describe yourself? Fun. Fun. Mm-hmm. I agree. I don't know. I, se- I, second, I second that motion because... Um, I was thinking that today, actually. So uh, Velma's actually out here because she does this amazing conference. It's annual, right? Every year? No, actually, the Gathering of the Queens. Gathering of the Queens. Okay. It's monthly. Monthly. In different cities. In different cities. Okay, so the word, we did the Atlanta version today. And while you were up there talking, I was thinking, like, she is silly. <laughs> like, I'm like, she's a boss. She's very professional. She knows how to... How to t- turn on her executive vibes like like that. But I was looking at her today and I'm just like, she's kind of goofy. I am very goofy. <laughs> like, I was really thinking that earlier today. I was like, okay, she's fun. Have you always been that way? I have. Okay. I have. And um, it's one of the things that people don't expect okay. from me because I don't put a lot of my personality on social media. You can't really see personality mm-hmm. through pictures. So you just got to know me, you know? Yeah. And I'm just... A lot of stuff is funny, so I just laugh, you know. It's natural. (laughs) That's good. And I like that you said that. I'm going to fix this for you just a little bit. Um, That you said some stuff is funny. So your life actually has not always been funny. Uh, (laughs) Not at all. Not at all. (laughs) So you come from humble beginnings. Um, Houston girl from Texas. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your upbringing? Because I've heard you say, you know, the mission, which we'll get into that a little bit later, but your mission is to basically end poverty through entrepreneurship. And you can only do that because, you, because you've experienced poverty yourself. Um, and I've heard you talk about that a little bit, but can you give like a specific story to what you mean when you say I've experienced poverty? Yes. Yeah, so poverty, I've experienced a lot of poverty, actually. Um, so I'll give an example. So for Christmas... When your mother goes to the community center to get your toys and to bring them home, mm-hmm. to wrap them um, for your as Christmas gifts for you, that is poverty. Um, when you um, don't have um, insurance and you're on Medicaid and your mother is on food stamps, mm-hmm. that is poverty. Yeah. Um, when you are... Um, when you have to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, mm. that is poverty. Um, when you are around, um, when your entire family um, are alcoholics and drug addicts, mm-hmm. then you become, you, a lot of times people become part of their environment. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's poverty. Mm-hmm. Because I had to figure out how to get myself out of that. Yeah, and, and I like what you said that because it's so easy to become a product of your environment. Absolutely. It's, 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 um, it's easy to do that, but I do want to ask you, at, one point, at what point did you realize, like, okay, I don't want that for myself. I'm going to change the trajectory of my life. You know what's interesting is um, my first job... Um, I realized that there was something bigger and better to life. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes you don't know what you don't know. So I didn't really understand what poverty really was until I began to experience what poverty wasn't. Mm. And so as I began to meet new people Mm -hmm. and get from around my core environment Mm -hmm. I you know there was a light bulb and as I began to um, study success stories of people that Mm. had it worse than I did yeah I began to understand that 
it was something that they did and it's something that I need to do too. Mm -hmm. And so that aha moment was um, really in 2016 when I went through a divorce mm -hmm. and I, um, I moved to Atlanta. It was the first time like leaving my hometown. I always traveled, but I'm talking about physically moving myself. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere else. Um, I had an, an accident that should have ultimately ended my life. And I believe that's when the light bulb really mm -hmm. came on. It's like, wait a minute. You thought you've been living, but you really haven't. Wow. And that was the aha moment. Wow. And was that the aha moment for when you were like, I want to start this amazing program that you have, Millionaire Mastermind Academy? Or was that the life, or is that the moment that you realized, I need to change my life for the better? You know, that's a really good question. And it's a two-part, I have a two-part answer to that. Okay. So because of what I had to go through, there was a series of situations that, transpired that allowed me to open my eyes and something in my heart and spirit opened mm. I want to say knowledge okay because and, and I, I'm going to use knowledge because a lot of us think that we have knowledge but we don't really have knowledge mm. and you recognize that when you go through things and then you're like wow that happened and I made it through that mm -hmm. Some people didn't make it through that. Um, and so when I started this journey and I moved to Atlanta in 2016, that was really when I had the aha moment. Okay. Because I, I experienced success, but I did not feel complete. Mm. In what ways? How, how did you know that? Okay, so... Money does not buy happiness. So when I say successful, I had the money, you know, I had, you know, the material things. I mm -hmm. had, you know, real estate. Mm -hmm. So I was successful in that right, but I was very empty on the inside. Okay. And when I say empty, you have the exterior. Right. But then you're empty. How does somebody know when they're empty? What does that look like? What does it look like? You continue to chase things that you probably shouldn't be chasing. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And you are never, you never come to completion within yourself. You never feel this, that, that mm. happy space. Mm -hmm. You always, you That's know, it, it always feels like you need to do more. Yeah. Even though you're doing more. Yeah. Do you think do you think people um, can tell that they're empty from the conception of their emptiness or does it come over time? Yeah, that's a good question. It actually comes over time. Okay. But and it also comes when you come to the end of yourself. Mm. So I had to come to the very end of myself. Yes. And when I say come to the end of myself, um, like I had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. And so when we chase things and we're going around in circles and then you're, you're empty. Yeah. That's a bad place to be mm -hmm. because when you realize what your purpose is in life, then that's fulfilling. Yeah. And there's no amount of money that can replace that feeling. Like if I lost everything today, mm -hmm. I would still be the Velma that I am today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you heard it here first. I want to I wanna stay on that topic and unpack that a little bit because I like what you said about purpose. So speaking of purpose, you're on the episode, um, you're on the podcast, Finding Your Niche with Niche, where we basically, I talk to people who have made strides in their specific niche, in their specific purpose and calling. Um, when, I, when you think about the Millionaire Mastermind Academy, Thinkzilla, did those ideas start off that way or were there other versions of that? It definitely didn't start like that. Okay. Um, what I've learned along the journey is that 
you know, God does not give you the whole plan mm -hmm. when you start. But if you would just start. Yeah. Well, so what did it look like in the early, early when you first thought about it? So um, I started Thinkzilla nine years ago. Okay. Um, in Houston. And it started as a marketing and public relations company for small businesses. Okay. I had experienced failure. My first three companies failed, and then I failed my way on up to success. My fourth company <laughs> failed my way on up. was successful. Failed my way on up. <laughs> failed my way on up. You'll get that when you go home. <laughs> You'll get that later. <laughs> Um, don't let that go over your head. Right. Um, so I failed my way on to the top. So mm -hmm. failed. My first three companies failed. My fourth company was successful. The fifth company was successful. And then um, here comes Thinkzilla. But I want to talk a little bit about the failure before Thinkzilla. Mm -hmm. So I had a I had a, um, a salon in Houston, Texas. Okay. Um, and. Um, it was, I, I built the salon. It was, you know, it was a, an amazing salon. I had my own luxury hair extension line okay. and my own product line. It was actually called Jazzy Girls. Um, Jazzy Girls. So it was luxury hair collection. <laughs> and um, I was approached by, um, you know, a network. I, okay. You know, I was approached by. My disclosure time is up, so I can I can talk about this. <laughs> so I was approached by this network, um, Animal Planet, and okay. the name of the TV show was Call of the Wild Man with Turtle Man and Ernie. Okay. And I don't know if you're familiar with this show, but they're not on right now. But anyway, <laughs> um, they were um, they were you know people that were out in the wildlife. They you know rescue animals and stuff like that. Now, I had a very, very beautiful salon. If you were to Google right now, ja Houston Jazzy Girls, you would see it's pink. It was pink. It had these beautiful chandeliers. Yeah. I had like 12 hairstylists. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So anyway, long story short, um, the production people came to my salon and they're like, you know, this would be amazing if Turtle Man and Ernie could shoot in here. You're going to mm -hmm. have millions and millions of views, Okay. you know, if you let them shoot. Sounds good. So it sounded really good because I'm like, okay, we're going to be on TV. This is going to be amazing. And um, I told my attorney about this amazing opportunity that yeah. I thought. And he said, well, wait a minute, Velma. Um, I don't think it's a good idea. And I said, okay. well, why? You don't even know what's going on. He said, what are they going to plant? What type of animals is good? I said, oh. well, I hadn't thought about that. They just told me I was going to have millions and right. millions of views. And he said, well, I'm advising you not to do it. I said, why is my attorney hating on me? Yeah. My attorney was like literally <laughs> hating on not me, hating right? On me. And so um, we ended up doing the segment and okay. they planted bats. In the salon. You can Google all of this. Bat Day of Jazzy Girls. Okay. Like bats? Bats. They planted bats in the salon. Um, I did. We did get millions <laughs> and millions of views to the point to where we were in the Galleria. The staff I, and I were walking mm -hmm. in the Galleria and children would be like, Mommy, those are the bat. Those are the girls from the bat planet. Those no. are the animal planet. And so um, not only that. So oh. we got a lot of negative press so okay. all of the press in houston famous taxi jazzy girls infested by bats okay that was situation number one okay. then situation number two they accidentally left three bats the bats were found dead in front of the salon this is all googleable okay the bats were found dead in front of the <laughs> salon and uh, mother jones wanted to and they wanted to interview me because it was it opened up uh, an investigation and it was <laughs> trending on social media. It was trending on wow. the news. Famous sexy jazzy girls involved in that yeah. show, reality show. You know, just I'm like, how in the heck did oh I get into this? And then goodness. I called my lawyer and I'm like, you told me not to, but this is what he said. You don't have to tell me what's going on. Yeah. I've been saying it all on the news. And so wow. in that situation... There were four weeks mm. that the news stations had their tripods up. And so when customers would pull oh. up, they would, you know, take a picture. They would put it on social media. What's going on at Jazzy Girls, this, that, and the other. So that led to me having to um, close Jazzy Girls. But what I ended up wow. doing was I sold the business model okay. to a Canadian company. And I closed the brick and mortar. Wow. And so then I transitioned into Thinkzilla. Wow. So that is how Thinkzilla was birthed. So, but how did you know to do that? How did you know to make the right decision to sell? Because 
like you said, you were probably really excited. It was a, a beautiful space. It's your baby. Yep. And I feel like a lot of women, a lot of people struggle with that, having an idea that they really become married to. And it's hard for them to let go of it. So what allowed you to be able to do that? Like sell yeah. your business? Yeah. So I, I learned early on that I needed to protect my intellectual property. Okay. I knew. Um, so I had like my, um, my product line, my mm -hmm. hair line. I had everything documented. Mm -hmm. So I had the, the processes. I had my, my, um, my revenue model. I had, um, you know, my intellectual property. I had all of that. Mm. And so I knew that what I had was very, very valuable. Okay. Um, and the company, so this particular company that bought the business model, mm -hmm. they were a client. They were buying a lot. Oh. They were buying the majority of our product. Okay. And so when I shared with them what happened, they said, hey, you want to sell it? Mm -hmm. I said, you know, sell it. Maybe because I can't. I'm not making yeah. money with it now because when people are coming up now we're all over the news. Right. Bad day, jazzy girls, and it was just a bad thing. Yeah. And that's how I was able to sell because I knew the value. I had a documented mm. process. I had a revenue model. I knew who my target audience was, mm -hmm. and it was packaged properly. I did the proper branding. Yeah. I had my financials. That's wow. So you were ready. I was ready. You had everything done. You laid the foundation properly. And I think that's important because a lot of people get excited about being entrepreneurs, but they don't do the actual um, proper framework of like getting everything written down in black and white, um, having an actual LLC, like that an actual correct. legitimate business. People start a business, but it's still not a business on paper. Um, and so I do want to ask you, because I like what you said about this whole story, about how you thought it was going to be one way, it turned out to be something else. I think that's interesting because not only really you're a renaissance woman you do a lot of, you do a lot of different things um and being an author is included in that yeah and so you wrote a book when god says go can you tell a story or a situation where you wanted something so to happen so badly but god said no mm. wow that's interesting um so I'll share um, a little bit about the car crash that I had. Okay. Um, and I, I actually documented this in the book, When God Says Go. Um, so I was headed to take a meeting mm -hmm. that I shouldn't have been taking. All right. I knew that when I moved from Houston to Atlanta, that I was supposed to have been fasting, consecrating, because I needed to you know, seek the next direction for my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I was headed to take a meeting that I should not have been taking. Why? Well, the person that I was taking the meeting with was not, you know, a good person in okay. a sense. Okay. You know, and, and sometimes we know when things aren't, they're not good for us, but we still want to just, do mm -hmm. things right it was one of those type okay. of situations you're figure, gonna figure it out later yeah i'll yeah. figure it out later but let me just let me do just what i think no <laughs> but want to do or need to do right now that's right yeah and so i did and um i was hit by a semi-tractor truck wow um here in atlanta on 10th and spring street um i was spin around in the middle of rush hour traffic then i was hit by another truck and i was taken to the hospital by lifelight Oh. And all I remember hearing was, is she alive? Um, the car was totaled out. Um, I woke up and the doctor said, I don't know how you survived this accident, mm. but you survived it and you don't even have a scratch on you. Wow. It was a new Lexus and not one airbag deployed. Wow. Not one airbag deployed. Oh my goodness. And I'll have to send you the, the pictures of it. But not one airbag deployed. And that was a, a pivotal moment in my life mm -hmm. because I wanted to continue to do what Velma wanted to do, even though I knew that wasn't the right thing right. for me to be doing. God said no. God said no. Mm. But then that no pushed me into a go. Mm -hmm. And then that was wow. the awakening of the journey. What did you think? Um when you get ready, let me let me rephrase this. What did you gain out of almost losing your life? 
I had to, I feel like I had to die spiritually. Okay. In order to live now. Okay. So I died spiritually because I, I wasn't where I was supposed to have been. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that was my, that was my second chance at life. And because I surrendered then, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, for allowing me to survive this accident. Yeah. Whatever your will is, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the path that I'm on now. Wow. Ooh. Do you remember the moment? Do you remember the impact? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, I it's so scary. I've never been in a car accident. God willing, I've never actually been in a car accident. But like, what is that? And it was the first. It was as a first, first one. Yes. Oh wow! What was that experience like? So, um, it was the first. First of all, I had just moved here, and it was the first day that my son started school. Okay. Or he would have been in the car with me. Oh wow! So that was the first thing. Um, and I thought, wow, what, what, what happened? What mm -hmm. did I, what did I do? What, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What, what is this about? Yeah. I felt like my life was, you know, it was tearing apart at the time mm -hmm. because, um, it was so many things happening. I just went through a divorce, you know, um, you know, I didn't take anything from my divorce because I wanted First of all, let me, I want to go back. So okay. um, when I went through my divorce, I, we had multiple cars, um, you know, a lot of stuff. And I believe I heard a voice tell me to not take anything, not a car, mm. not nothing. Okay. But I said, well, I'll let him keep everything else because I can rebuild, but I'm taking a car. Yeah. And the car that I took was the car that was totaled out. Mm. And wow. so, for me, I believe that God needed to, God wanted to take away everything of my past. Or, you know, just mm. strip me of everything from my past so that I can have a new path forward. Yeah. And that's what happened. Yeah. I want to talk about two things. Um, and this is actually something like I'm kind of, just recently, that I'm learning, okay, that's a struggle or that's something that I'm starting to think about or contemplate more. Because I love that you mentioned your son, um, and then you being on a new path of like trying to, not really trying, doing, um, achieving all of these different accolades in your entrepreneur journey. Um, mom guilt. A lot of people don't talk about that. Everybody's excited to be a boss. All these women are out here doing it, living it up. But all these women are, a lot of these women are also moms. Yeah. And so there's a caveat to success is that you kind of have to balance many different things when you have many different roles that you play in your life. So can you kind of speak on whether or not you ever struggled with mom guilt and maybe like thinking about how you kind of had to balance being a, a, an amazing entrepreneur, but also like an amazing mom and how you had to cope with that and how you maybe are coping right now. Yeah, man, mom guilt is real. Yeah, it is real. Um, so and I still deal with mom guilt to this day. Mm. Um, so I'll tell you that when I moved to Atlanta, my son was going to a school. And then the next year, I, um, I bought a house. And then he had to go to another school. Mm. And then I sold the house. And then I wanted to move somewhere else. And then that was another area. Yeah. And so he went to... Um, three different schools here, five, six, seven. And so he was, wow. you know, he, he, he was trying to make friends, but every time he made friends, obviously we went, we had to move, he moved, you mm -hmm. know? And I felt really bad because I'm like, dang, my son, you know, mm -hmm. he, he, he deserved to have friends, you mm -hmm. know? And I, um, I started to just have these conversations with him. Yeah. It's like, you know, Monty, how do you feel about, mommy you know doing all of this moving around and i'm an entrepreneur yeah. and you know it it seems that things aren't really stable and you know he said um i'm with you mm. and i was like oh wow. my god that like almost it just like 
touch me, you know, because there can't be it is there can't be a better response on yeah. earth than someone you love telling you I'm, I'm with, with you. you. Yeah. Oh my God. That is just like oh that is like ultimate completion. And it was he was I'm seven years old. You. He said I'm oh my God. with you. And it's so funny. I so now that. we're in Arizona oh and um, you know, so he's eleven now. And we've been just moving and moving and moving. And he's just been like, I'm with you. And that so, I'm like, sorry. No. But that's it's just like, and I told him the other day, I was like, you know, mommy thinking about going to another country, you mm. know, I might, you know, what do you think about that? He said, well, I really don't want to go to another country. I'm starting to make new friends here in mm. Arizona. And I was like, um, I said, well, maybe you can stay with your dad. He was like. No, I'm going with you. Oh my god. And I was like <laughs> Wow. Wow. Some of our biggest heroes. Yes, yes, yes. Some of our biggest heroes. Yes. Wow. Are They're the big one, people. Are like, the, they are big people. They're the ones that come behind us. Yeah. Wow. That's that's huge. And I think that's so key. And I love that you're just being vulnerable in this space because it is so real. Yeah. Like, it's a very real thing because I struggle with the same thing of, like, trying to be accomplished. But then it's, like, it's it's just a it's just a hard thing because something has to always be sacrificed. Something has to yeah. be sacrificed. And the thing that I do like about sacrifice is that there's a blessing on the other side of it. And so if you can be able to get your... To, to communicate to your children um, that concept and that idea, and they for, for them to just kind of back you in yeah. that, um, whether they understand it fully or not, I think that's a commendable part on you that you've been able to raise him in a way that he is even able to articulate. Like, no, I'm with you, mom. Like, whatever you want to do, I don't fully understand it. I don't fully like even agree with all, all of it, but I am with you. And so I would say that that is attributed to how you've been able to raise him, how you've been able to love him amidst being accomplished, amidst being this superhuman of a woman. And so I just want to commend you on being able to do that because Thank I you. really feel like he's only able to respond in that way as a result of how you raised him. I appreciate that. And, you know, you, 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 just, you just said something that was key. Mm -hmm. um, there's a blessing on the other side. Yeah. And um, the blessing in this is, you know, now in a state where there's less than 5% of mm -hmm. African Americans, that I thought that would be a challenge for him. Okay. But the fact that I've been moving around so much, yeah. it doesn't matter what ecosystem he goes into. He looks a person dead in their eyes. He talks to them. He <laughs> shakes their hand. He does not yeah. care. He's going to talk. There is no fear in him. Yeah. <laughs> I follow him. Y'all need to follow him. Hold on. Let's take a quick, let's do a quick ad. Right in the middle of this episode, y'all go follow King Monty because he's on another level. If you want to be entertained, if you want to see some swag mixed with a little drip, mixed with a little bit of fun, go follow him because he is all that in a bag of chips. But you can't tell him that because he already know that. So don't even bother. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that is so funny. But yeah, I, um, I want to ask you something that you also said earlier um, about knowledge. I think success is actually a byproduct of wisdom, which I would classify to kind of be in the same family of knowledge. And so when you think about having knowledge, having wisdom, which equals success, what would you say to somebody as far as like them trying to find their footing with their niche and having the wisdom and the knowledge to pursue that? So first of all, wisdom is knowledge mm -hmm. applied correctly. Mm. Say that again for the people in the back. Wisdom is knowledge applied correctly. I know a lot of successful people that does not have wisdom. Mm. We know a lot of people That's good. that are successful, but just because you're successful, it doesn't mean that you have wisdom. Mm. There are successful people in our governmental systems there are a lot of successful people mm -hmm. in our educational systems. Mm -hmm. 
but those people are ignorant when it comes to wisdom or we wouldn't be going through a lot of what we're going through mm -hmm. so I'll take wisdom over if I had to choose wisdom or suggest plain old success mm -hmm. I'll take wisdom because wisdom will get you indoors and get you to tables that success or knowledge specialized yeah. knowledge can't get you into not that's good that's good. Um, how have you been able to activate wisdom in business? That's a great question. You are so amazing at this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> thank so you. amazing. I've done like tons of interviews, Aww. but this is these questions are thank very you, interesting and amazing. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. So when you think about life and experiences mm -hmm. first of all you have to be cognizant of what's going on okay if you're not even aware mm. of what's going on you don't even have the wisdom yeah to know that what you've been doing is right or wrong so good and so when you think about i'll use a distraction as an example okay oftentimes people don't realize They've been distracted until they've been completely distracted. Mm. And sometimes you don't realize you're completely distracted. It can be a year or two years. Yeah. But how much time have you wasted because you were not able to discern or you didn't have the wisdom to know that this was leading to a distraction or it was a distraction when oh, you started wow. it? That's good. That's so good. So patterns. Mm-hmm recognizing and understanding people yeah and not just the representation of who people seem to be mm -hmm. but understanding who they are at the core mm. so when i meet people i am looking past all of this yeah. i'm looking straight at the core of who this person is and in my mind i'm thinking and i'm and i'm and i'm paying attention to certain buzzwords i'm paying attention to certain um, actions. I'm paying attention to certain patterns. Yeah. Nonverbals. Nonverbals. Yeah. Because nine out of ten I've experienced it already on the journey. And mm -hmm. I'm able to make a calculated decision because of the wisdom mm -hmm. that I've gained through the experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so aside from wisdom, there's other practical things you need to be a beast in doing business. When you walk into a, a conference or a boardroom or a meeting, what are some practical things that people and even more specifically women need to know how to do when it comes to execution in business? The first thing you need to know is what you're doing. The first thing you need to know is who you're talking to. Mm. The second thing you need to know is what problem you're solving what is the problem that you're solving because oftentimes women in business small business owners and entrepreneurs they approach things as though they are somebody's doing them a favor or they're doing someone else a favor okay sorry no yeah that they're doing someone else a favor okay and when you feel as though you're doing someone a favor or someone's doing you a favor, mm -hmm. oftentimes you don't really articulate your value. Wow. So you need to understand that, number one, you have value. And you're sitting at the table because you have something that mm -hmm. is valuable. You need to put a tag on that. And you need to speak up. Yeah. A lot of us, we, we you know... We are passive. Mm -hmm. Don't be passive. The next thing I'd say is own what own the space that you're in. Yes. Own it. Don't yeah. just want to be another mediocre company. Own the space that you're in and identify your unique value proposition and be able to articulate what that is mm -hmm. on the space and a lot of us we're like we're scared on the yes. inside you know it's kind of like yeah you know 
But half of the strategy is in confidence. It's in confidence. Yeah. And so you have to be confident in yourself because if you're not confident in yourself, mm -hmm. no one else will be confident in you. Exactly. And so that's important. Confidence is, impor is important. And understanding that there is no I in team. Mm -hmm. Build a team. Take your business serious. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do business and be in business, then you need to do that. Yeah. And you need to build a team because you can't do everything by yourself. It, mm -hmm. I mean, it may work in the very beginning, but if you desire to build something yeah. of a legacy, something that you can, you know, pass down, you mm -hmm. want, you, you're going to need a team. Yeah. And I think that's good. And I want to use that as a segue of you kind of mentioning the ability and the capacity to be able to pass something down, because I want you to actually touch on more in depth what mastermind Millionaire Mastermind Academy is because that is essentially what you're doing. You're creating an opportunity. You're creating a space and a forum for female entrepreneurs to create something that will essentially be passed down. Can you talk about your love for community involvement, your philanthropic endeavors, and, and where did you get that from, and why do you do it? So Millionaire Mastermind Academy is my baby. It's my heart. Mm -hmm. um, so because I was raised in poverty. Yes. I wanted to create something that was going to mitigate that. And so the mission of the organization is to end poverty through entrepreneurship for women worldwide. Um, and in doing so, um, if we are going to push our communities forward, mm -hmm. then women need a seat at the table. We need a seat at the table, just period. Yeah. And um, I realize there is power in unity mm -hmm. there is power in collaboration there is power when you can get women on one accord mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't know what we don't know and if you come from a family line yeah. of anything similar to mine yeah. then you did not you were underrepresented mm -hmm. You didn't have resources. You didn't have access to quality business development training. Yeah. You didn't have access to those things. And so for me, and in going through my entrepreneur journey, I understood there were things that we needed to be successful, but that I, I wanted to become, or, or, and or, I'm sorry, I wanted to become and create something that was solving a problem okay. of which I knew because I experienced it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dang, if I would have had a Velma, I would be much further than where I am. Yeah, yeah. So Millionaire Mastermind Academy is all about helping women build capacity mm -hmm. in their business, mm -hmm. um, helping them tap into their, their higher calling, their purpose, and understanding that they were created for more. And I believe that sometimes we need to hear that aha thing that pushes us forward. Yeah. And so because we don't know what we don't know. And if we're around people every day that have never excelled, mm -hmm. then there's limited capacity in, in what we, how we see life. Yeah. And there is 193 countries mm -hmm. and when you think about us being in one country we're in the united states of america mm -hmm. this is the land of the free where people are coming from other countries here yeah and they are doing amazing but what about why are there people here mm -hmm. and they can't even figure out what they can do but you got people coming over <laughs> from other countries yeah and coming Changing the Wealthy game. Wealthy in two years. Yeah. You know what I mean? What is that? Well, first of all, it's it's systemic. Okay. And if we are to overcome systemic issues, mm -hmm. we need to have a seat at the table. And the fact that I work in both public and private, with public and private entities, mm -hmm. they have resources for underrepresented 
communities. They wow. have resources for minorities. They have resources for African American women in business. They're okay. there. They have the resources. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about poverty, because poverty is systemic, mm -hmm. we know this. Yeah. We have to be able to get the knowledge. Yeah. I think it's not enough. You have to become proactive. That is right. It's not enough. You can't be complacent because we're already behind. We are. So you got to be proactive about figuring out how you can make a difference. That's right. Do you think that every woman should become an entrepreneur? And why are you so passionate about entrepreneurship? Yeah. So the first question, um, do I think that every woman should become an entrepreneur? No. Okay. Um, everyone is not they're not entrepreneur material mm -hmm. this is not easy and then we need people to work yes <laughs> you know what i mean we need you yeah. know we need people to work and so there's a difference between a leader and a manager mm -hmm. we need leaders and we need managers and so it, it's not entrepreneurship is definitely not for everyone mm. But for someone that this is all I know is risk taking. Yeah. I, you know. <laughs> that's my whole life. <laughs> yeah, so I've cut out for Because that's what it's like. Entrepreneurship is like getting on a roller coaster, strapping in, and holding on tight. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what was the other question? No, um, I was saying, I was asking you, should everybody be an entrepreneur? And then... I can't remember what I asked you after that. What was the second question that I asked you? I can't remember. But I do want to ask you something based on what you just said. Because you've been able to kind of be the pioneer in something that's very successful, uh, very lucrative. Just recently, Millionaire Mastermind Academy was able to accumulate $500,000 worth of funding for the program, the Accelerator Program. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, that's something that a lot of people want to know is how do you get how do you get money? How do we get to the coins? How do you do that? Okay, that's a great question. Um, so on the Thinkzilla side, um, okay. the consulting company, um, we specialize in diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we build programs for okay. Fortune 500 companies um, that would help them to diversify their workforce, their supply chains, and all of this other excellent. stuff. Excellent, excellent. So we had a, um, a, a company that reached out um, I will leave this anonymous but we had a company that reached out mm -hmm. one a very very large um, venture capital company out of um, Silicon Valley okay and um, they reached out to Thinkzilla and they wanted us to build a diversity program okay. um, for them and after doing an assessment mm -hmm. and um, digging in a little deeper um, and understanding some of the challenges that they were having mm -hmm. I felt in my heart that it was right for me to turn down that money on the Thinkzilla side wow. and helping them to do diversity. And my words to the principal, to this company, mm -hmm. was, I do not wish to take your money and build a diversity program. Mm -hmm. But what I would like for you to do is to become diverse as a result. Mm. He said, well, what does this, what does that mean? Yeah. And I said, um, a lot of people are using diversity as a buzzword. Right. I said, but if you do the right thing, then diversity is the result of doing the right thing. Mm, that's good. I said, I have an organization that I'm very passionate about. Mm -hmm. I said, it's women, minority women, African-American women. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to build some additional resources for them. Wow. So what I would like for you to do is donate the contractual value of what you were going to pay Thinkzilla to my nonprofit so that I can help more women. Mm. And then let's revisit this a year from now. And then by then you would have become diverse because of your actions. Wow. And that's how it came about. <sighs> I have goosebumps. If, that, if that's not the most <laughs> boss thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I have little goosebumps. You know? I do because I'm just like because when I'm hearing you say that, I'm thinking about the God in you, the godliness in that approach to being able to twist that thing on its head and be able to give back because that's not a small number. No, by any means to anybody. Like that's 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 a nice chunk. 
And so for you to be able to have the heart and the gumption and the audacity to even say to these high level people, these high level corporations, um, thank you, but no thank you. If you want to make a real change, do it for real. And so I just think that that is amazing. I think that's important that people understand that. I think that um, that goes back to what we're talking about, wisdom. And that you've been able to kind of be in this position, have a relationship with God, to have discernment, to be able to make these kind of choices in, in these very calculated decisions. Because I think it's important, too, that we kind of touch on um, this before we even wrap up. We can't. I would be remiss if we didn't talk about your relationship with God. But I think when people talk about God in business, it's not... It's not this kumbaya. There's actual strategy that the Holy Spirit can give you. There's actual wisdom and impartation for transformation um, that he can give you to be able to make these very, very high-level decisions. And so can you talk about the tie, the tie between your relationship with God and your relationship with business? So my relationship with God is my business. Mm. I don't separate them. So if you have a problem with God, then there's no Velma, and then there's no business with me. And, you know, I say that unapologetically. Yeah. You know, and I've had, I've turned some things down. Just the other day on a Zoom, mm -hmm. a young lady said, oh, is this something spiritual? Well, here, this is the perfect case of person that should have done research. Because mm. if you would have done your research, you would have known it. Because faith is all over everything that I do. And so, I don't separate the two. Mm. I am not perfect. I listen to Cardi B. I listen to gospel. I listen to country. I'm not perfect. Again, yeah. I will let me say that again. Yeah, that's funny. I say the same thing. I'm like, I love Pastor Troy, but I also love Jesus. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So I hollered if you hear me. Right. <laughs> so. But I feel you on that. And I think that's important because everybody feels like you can't, they can't coexist. I understand there are seasons, there are moments when God does tell you, hey, I'm, I'm, I take precedent over everything. But I think that people get afraid of being in the Christian experience and having a relationship with God because they think every time you have to sacrifice things that you enjoy and things that you um that are just a natural experience of your life. And so I think that's key that you're saying that, that you kind of incorporate God in everything that you do. He's kind of in the fabric of who you are and what you do. And can you kind of talk about, as we get ready to close, just some words of advice for people who maybe want to do something similar, are kind of grappling with the idea of becoming an entrepreneur, but maybe feel like they don't have the proper footing to actually make that step. What would you say to that person? I would say, first of all, pray. Because God answers prayers. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing I'd say is to never build something based on money. Mm -hmm. Don't do nothing because of how much money you're going to make. But what? how big is the problem? you're going to solve That's so good. figure out the problem that you're going to solve and make sure you're solving a big problem yeah because your gift will make room for you and even for people that may not like you that gift is going to get you in the doors and at the tables mm -hmm. that you need to be at so understand the importance of your gift and guess what your gift cannot be taken away from you they can't fire your gift. They can't Ooh. fire my gift. They can't do that. So even if you don't like me, I have a gift. Mm -hmm. And because I figured out the problem that I'm solving, you need the solution to that. That's so good. And lastly, never, 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 never give up. Y'all heard it there eight times over. <laughs> Don't ever give up. I love that. I love that. Oh, my God. That's so good. Um, if people want to be a part of Millionaire Mastermind Academy, can you tell them what they can experience and why they should join the movement? Absolutely. Um, Millionaire Mastermind Academy 
is absolutely amazing and not just because it's my organization mm -hmm. but there is it's a movement of wisdom it's knowledge it's business development training it's economic empowerment it's mindset it's leadership mm. and i don't know nowhere you can go and get all of that okay because they have some some very <laughs> um they have some cool you know um universities and things of that sort yeah that um these professors are teaching entrepreneurs professors mm -hmm. are teaching entrepreneurs the mm -hmm. professors the i want to say i want to say the professors again <laughs> are teaching entrepreneurship right and they've never been entrepreneurs right and so they're getting you know some good stuff i'm mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. but what they're not getting is the the actual experience exactly that not just myself but i have an amazing board we have volunteers we have mm -hmm. mentors that i personally vet to make sure that they yeah. can add value to the ladies mm -hmm. but you're getting everything at millionaire mastermind academy you are becoming that whole woman yeah you can't get that nowhere else i don't care mm -mm. and let me tell you something you may you know people spend all of this money going to motivational events and empowerment events and they leave in the same way they came in right <laughs> You know, that I'm telling you, they're leaving the same way they came mm -hmm. in. But with Millionaire Mastermind Academy, people are evolving, they're progressing, they're growing, they're changing, and they're becoming the whole woman. Yeah. They're moving from caterpillar stage to being a beautiful butterfly. Yes. And that is what Millionaire Mastermind Academy is about, is the yeah. transformation for impartation. Mm -hmm. The impartation for transformation. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you because speaking of butterfly, you have given me my wings. I like for a long time had a very difficult time embracing the terminology and just the idea of being an entrepreneur until I was a part of the Millionaire Mastermind Academy. And so I feel like I just owe you so much for giving me the capacity to believe in myself in a space that I never could have dreamed of because this entrepreneurial space that I'm in right now is like nothing that I've ever experienced. It's liberating, it's freeing, it's everything good, everything hard <laughs> and difficult all in one, but it's worth it because I'm living in my freedom. I'm living in my joy and what I get to do on my terms. And there's just nothing like it. And so I want to thank you for, one, coming on the show, and for, two, giving me my wings Aww. to be this little entrepreneur butterfly out and here in these streets. You are amazing. The world <laughs> needs you. You're thank here you. for a reason. I saw that in you the yes. very first day. Thank you. And thank you thank for you. what for what you've done, too, Nishi. You've been yeah. absolutely amazing. Storytelling. Mm -hmm. This is your gift. Thank you. So even for people that may not like you, mm -hmm. there's a gift mm -hmm. that they need. And yeah. they're going to come to you for the solution to the problem. Absolutely. Well, you are the solution to a lot of people's problems. If you're struggling, trying to figure out how to be an entrepreneur, definitely reach out to Dr. Velma Traham. Um, if you want branding, consulting, uh, reach out to Thinkzilla. And if you want to be a dope female entrepreneur and really make strides in your niche, um, definitely reach out to me and rest of mine. Academy, all of those are on Instagram. Full legit websites. It's a real deal. Full of websites. We've got websites out here. MillionaireMastermindAcademy.org. <laughs> there you go. All right, Dr. Velma, thank you so much for coming on. Thank I you wish you continued me. success in all that you do. I know that that's going to happen as a result of you being spirit led. And so I commend you for everything that you've done. And I can't wait to watch you grow. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me.